live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Welcome to Inside Scoop. Tonight we have a forum for candidates for the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District Board of Directors, heretofore known as Soil and Water. Um, I am Katherine Reed. I am from the League of Women Voters of the Fairfax area, and I will be your moderator this evening. We are pleased to partner with a number of community and service groups in sponsoring this forum. Like the League, our partners are committed to supporting the democratic process by providing opportunities to hear from the candidates and compare their responses and encouraging community participation. We are grateful to the volunteers from Inside Scoop and Fairfax uh, Public Access for their help in providing this venue. And we thank all of the many volunteers who have given hours and efforts in organizing this event. We particularly thank all of you for watching tonight. This is what American democracy looks like at its best, an opportunity to examine the issues factually, to ask questions regarding the things most important to us and to explore the candidates' positions. Here's the format for tonight's forum. All candidates certified to appear on the November 5th ballot were invited to participate. All seven candidates are here in person. I will introduce each candidate who will then have 90 seconds for opening remarks. After the first question, I will rotate the order in which candidates give 60 second answers to your questions. At the conclusion of the question time, each candidate will have 30 seconds to make a closing statement. After the forum, candidates will be given a list of questions asked and the additional questions submitted. They may post answers to some or all of the questions on their websites. The candidates have agreed to these rules, so let's get started. The first candidate to make opening remarks will be Gerald Owen, Jerry Peters, Jr. Mr. Peters. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this forum. It is the only really countywide forum we have for this office. Uh, appreciate very much the effort that you've gone to to put us on. I want to give the voters in Fairfax County uh, three reasons to vote for me for director of the Soil and Water Conservation District Board. First is I'm the incumbent. I've been working with the district now for 10 years, five of which have been as a director, uh, appointed in 2015 and then elected in, uh, later in 2015. Um, I'm qualified. I'm a retired environmental scientist. I have 30 some years of, of consulting experience working with uh, federal and uh, private uh, clients. I have a master's degree from Virginia Tech in environmental engineering and science, um, and this is, this is my work, this is my life. My third reason is I care. Uh, I've been, I have lived in Northern Virginia since I was six months old, various places, Prince William County and Fairfax County. Uh, helped start up Fairfax Master Naturalist in uh, 2007, and uh, I, I instruct three of the courses uh, uh, for, for basic uh, training in Master Naturalist. Um, I developed a, a class for Master Naturalist in st uh, personal stewardship for your land. <clears throat> I'm also on the Tree Commission, have been on the Tree Commission since uh, uh, 2012, representing the Soil and Water Conservation District. Um, I'd, lastly, I'd like to uh, <laughs> thank the team I'm working with, Chris Kerner and Monica Bilger, who you'll hear from next. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Mr. Chris Kerner. Thank you. Thank you to League and the volunteers. For those of you watching, this is a very professional organization out here filming. I'm Chris Kerner, a professional engineer and scientist and, and candidate for one of the three positions you can vote for, for Soil and Water District Director. Three of us are endorsed by the Democratic Party, Jerry, myself, and Monica. There are two Chris's running, as you will know. Mine's the one with the last name that you don't know how to pronounce very well. I've been an environmental engineer um, for over 40 years, using my technical experience and leadership skills to clean up toxic waste sites around the world. I'm a diplomat in the American Academy of Environmental Engineers, a registered engineer in 11 states, and a recipient of the Fairfax County Environmental Excellence Award. I also serve on the board as an associate director where they asked me a couple years ago to, to help out in some of the technical issues. I've known the staff for over 20 years and I really respect their technical abilities and their caring and their um, dedication to environmental stewardship. 
I'd really appreciate them. I've, I've worked with a number of them. They're very good people and have what I call the altruistic gene. They really care about helping people in the county. I'd be honored to, to receive your vote, and I look forward to the rest of the campaign in this discussion. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. Mr. Edward McGovern. Evening. My name's Ed McGovern. Um, I moved to Fairfax County in 1993, and I'd like to be involved with the growth that we all know is going to, going to continue. Uh, conservation is very important and is and should be involved uh, with this growth. And my kids are here, uh, as is the family, so I look forward to doing that. I've been involved with um, uh, several things. Uh, I worked, I've been on the Homeowners Association, and I was involved in youth sports with uh, league director uh, responsibilities. Uh, now, the reason I am running, and uh, I hope, hope you will notice, uh, let me just say a bureaucrat for a bureaucracy. The Board of Directors provides oversight for permanent staff. Uh, might not sound all that, all that sexy, but I worked resource management during my career with the Department of the Army, uh, DOD, integrating manpower and funding for uh, various levels of commands, because most of my time was, was with the Department of the Army. Uh, I was invo uh, in involved with a few environmental issues, uh, but mostly I feel that I can work with the permanent staff <coughs> um, to ensure their career progression, uh, ensure that the qualified employees are there and used in accordance with annual plan. And I'm very interested in being involved with the finance and operation committees uh, that, are in, that are with the permanent staff. And again, Ed McGovern, and I hope you'll take a look at the next couple of candidates also as we bring along Chris Bowen and Jane Dudick. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. McGovern. So let's now hear from Mr. Christopher Bowen. Thank you very much, Catherine. Good evening, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. I am Christopher Bowen, and I am seeking your vote on November 5th for the director of the Soil and Water Conservation District. The Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District brings a myriad of benefits. To the position of director, I would bring three strengths. First, I have experience engaging with soil and water issues in complex matters, such as evaluating experts. For example, while with the Department of Justice, I litigated cases focused on the construction of earthen dikes in marshy environments. I selected my expert and opposed the opposing expert regarding differing means of measuring the subsurface strata of soil and what this meant for soil conditions. Second, again, my experience with the Department of Justice, I have experience coordinating with multiple government agencies, as I needed to do when I was selected to, lead, to be the lead attorney for the United States when DeKalb County, Georgia, tried to impose a rain tax on the federal government. As lead attorney, in addition to ensuring the coordination with the Civil Division, I also coordinated our response with the Environmental Protection Agency, as well as the Natural Resource Division and the Tax Division of the Department of Justice. This will be a value and valuable and necessary experience, given the need for the Soil and Water District to coordinate many of its policies with uh, Fairfax County, the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation, and the Virginia Association of Soil and Water Districts. Third, I bring experience having helped advise boards of directors for private and quasi-public entities. I'm Christopher Bowen, and I ask for your vote. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowen. Now let's hear from Ms. Jane Dudick. Thank you. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for having us here uh, at this forum to speak, and then also for everyone watching out there from your homes. My name is Jane Dudick, and my academic background, I have a master's from Johns Hopkins University from Baltimore, Maryland in environmental science from policy, and also a PhD in environmental science and policy from George Mason University. Uh, my background, my work background, uh, I was a contractor for the Department of Defense for their ESGC, ESGCP program in their uh, energy and water program area. Uh, I work with renewable energy uh, technology adoption on U.S. military bases. I am also currently a volunteer with the Park Service, uh, basically uh, in charge of removing invasive species at Frying Pan Park down on West Ox Road. And I'm very interested, and with my background, uh, my policy background, I'm very interested in reaching out to other locals here in Fairfax County and helping them to understand what uh, they can do to manage their environment and the natural resources and all the um, resources that the county can bring to, to help them with that. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Jane Judick, and I would appreciate your vote on November 5th. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudick. And next, Ms. Monica Bilger. Thank you very much, and thanks to the League of Women Voters for allowing us to have this forum. My name is Monica Bilger, and I would respectfully request your vote this year. I bring 15 years of public policy outreach, health education, and community investment to this position. I have a master's from public policy from Georgetown, and I have a nursing degree, which is unique here because I'm bringing a perspective of health. Not all priorities are often environmental, and it's really important to remember that many of us here have served our community and have been involved in numerous spaces, and that includes understanding where the community is coming from. Environmental justice, equity, those are things I've worked on. Bringing one of our communities into the National Environmental Justice Conference just a year ago, where we talked about our outreach and how we worked with soil and water, specifically to look at local stream health and how that impacts communities and children. It's very important to me, I'm raising my family here in Fairfax County. My kids came up to me and wanted to play barefoot in the streams, and I realized I didn't know if that was gonna be able to happen, and I needed to know why. So I took my public health experience and I transferred it over to the environment and working with Audubon Naturalist Society. It's been my honor then to take that and become now the commissioner at large for Fairfax County Tree Commission, the environmental co-chair for the Fairfax County Federation of Citizens Associations. I work on the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance Exception Review Committee. I'm a cer certified water educator with Project WET and I'm a get to green chair for my own Hayfield Elementary. Go Hayfield Hawks. Um, so thank you all very much and I hope I have your vote. Thank you, Ms. Bilger. And next is Mr. Jet Thomas. <laughs> Hello. My name is Jonah Thomas. My background is in biomathematics. I'm retired now. This work requires a, a lot of background knowledge in, in physics, chemistry, um, engineering, system science. And for each project, it's necessary to pick up uh, specialized domain knowledge. So it takes a quick study. Oh, okay. D well, uh, I've applied systems, systems theory to human organizations a lot. So this job looks like a very good match for my skills, except for the pay scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> During my background interviewing here, one of the associate directors told me that the only difference between a director and, a, and an associate director is that the directors vote. Now, in Fairfax, we have a whole lot of volunteer expertise available. And so we try to get the best technical knowledge we can for each project, and then five people have the final say when there's always more good work to do than we have funding for. So there we are. It's a high morale organization. And maintaining that morale is the most important thing. So if we lose volunteers, then our ability to do anything significant is much reduced. So that's vital. The organization covers the county, but it isn't owned by the county. Oh my, sorry, okay. <laughs> thank you, Mr. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Thomas. So we're gonna start with the first question. I'm gonna go back to Mr. Peters. Um, we have numerous questions here. We probably don't have time for all of them, but I'm gonna start with a very high level question that um, was someone submitted. What will be your priorities for reducing countywide and region-wide greenhouse gases and increasing the county's resilience to the increasing impacts of climate change? Thank you for the question. Um, I want to say, first of all, that climate change is not the mission of the district. However, uh, our mission is soil, water, and flora and fauna, natural resources. And I would say that one of my pet topics, which is natural landscaping, that is converting lawn into uh, higher seral stages of, of vegetation, will capture more carbon. Uh, and and to in that regard, it would have a positive impact uh, on our carbon in the air. Thank you. Uh, same question, Mr. Kerner. Thank you. And clearly, with the storms that we've had in, in July 8th and two weeks afterwards, we're seeing the impact of some of these um, just intense rainfall events that are they're caused by climate change. A lot of what is dealt with in the county by the Soil and Water District is stormwater damage. And, I've worked quite a bit with that. I chair the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Ordinance Committee that Monica mentioned. And we have recently um, stopped a developer from building in a floodplain 
And also, I recently worked um, with the Hunter Mill District in stopping a 86-bed medical facility on a septic system that was right next to a sensitive impaired creek. So the, the, the board and the, the staff worked diligently on controlling stormwater, planting trees, increasing native, ha native habitat, protecting the riparian buffer areas, and really helping to try and reduce runoff of stormwater flows. Um, and you know, the, the climate change, there's a little bits that we can do um, to help um, in the long run. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. Mr. McGovern. Uh, certainly in keeping uh, with the first two gentlemen, uh, we want to keep our organization doable, uh, doing things that they can work on. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the things that they have been working on uh, might sound mundane, but uh, replacing washing machines in churches, and if you start doing that kind of thing with every church in Fairfax County, provide the expertise. Um, when I've been out knocking on doors, uh, a couple of people have talked to me about uh, changing light bulbs for homeowners association. I think that's the level of thing we want to be on. And I also think we want to remember the board of directors is for oversight for permanent staff that is going to work. And I think it's uh, critical um, to be working uh, to keep the workforce viable and vibrant and, and, and moving. Okay, so uh, again, we want to be doing things that are doable. And I think that's where the organization is now. And that's where we want to stay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bowen. Thank you very much. Allow me to begin by agreeing with Mr. Peters and Mr. Kerner, as well as Mr. McGovern, that this is, global warming is not going to be the focus of the uh, Soil and Water Board. As the saying goes, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Global warming is currently an issue that is being dealt with, with by people and organizations as diverse as Al Gore, Prince Harry like and Meghan Markle, okay. and the Fairfax County okay. Joint Environmental Task Force. There is, however, only one organization that focuses on the soil and water of Fairfax County, and that is the Soil and Water Board. However, what the Soil and Water Board can do is make sure that it increases its outreach efforts. Right now, the Soil and Water Facebook page only has 624 likes. That amounts to 0.05% of Fairfax County, an intelligent, well-educated, and interactive community. We need to boost those numbers, because those numbers we really could be doing much more. As Mr. McGovern said, it's the little things that we can really make an effort, such as encouraging tree planting and making sure that we are reaching out to all communities to let them know what we have to offer. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Ms. Dudick. Hello. Again, as everyone else has said, uh, global climate change is outside of the scope of the Soil and Water uh, Conservation District Board. But that being said, the little things that the board does here in Fairfax County will have an effect on the overall climate. Um, native plantings, tree plantings, all those things go into controlling carbon, uh, perme encouraging permeable pavers and rain barrels. All those things can also prevent uh, heat islands from forming, and um, those little things can come into play into controlling um, carbon in our atmosphere. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudick. Ms. Bilger. Well, thank you very much. I would um, say that this is somewhat uh, in the scope. Although we are focused on soil and water, we have to recognize the um, intricacies and the interweaving of the two. Um, exactly what we've been talking about here with Mr. Peters and everyone else on the board, uh, Mr. Kerner and such. What we do at Soil and Water is a limited staff, but their outreach is incredible. They have touched all corners of Fairfax County. And what we would continue to do is to increase and embrace the partnerships that we've formed, including things that I've done in my previous position as a partner, working with Faith Alliance for Climate Change and working at, at faith-based communities where we can talk about stream health and we talk about tree canopies at the same time addressing the issues of global warming. So there's a lot of opportunity to interlace our partnerships to grow those partnerships and to address all of those things which are part of the environmental literacy of a healthy environment thank you very much thank you Ms. Bilger Mr. Thomas okay. I agree with everybody so far <laughs> my the central thing here is that this is not an organization that can can fix climate change but we can do we can do many many small things that can have an effect um, I'm not sure it's worth listing them now Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. So one of the questions that was submitted has to do with impervious surfaces and the fact that this is a huge county of 1.2 million people and there are construction projects going on everywhere. Tyson's Corner, roads are being built. All of these things are impervious 
surfaces. And it is leading this question uh, submitter to the degradation of streams. They're saying the county's land use pro policies have resulted in over 80% of county streams being degraded and failure to meet the federal ozone standard. So what is the answer to balancing development, road construction, some of the things necessary to a, a, a county this size, an economy this size, with making sure that we are in fact maintaining the quality of our tree canopy and our streams and our green spaces. And this question is gonna to go to Mr. Kerner to start. Thank you. Um, that overlaps partially with the earlier question. And when Monica and I sit on the, the Chesapeake Bay Committee, um, we look at developments, particularly in the resource protection areas, which is the 100 foot buffer away from the streams, and also look at the floodplains and try and integrate them. Some of our work related on, a, on the start of a, an RPA policy committee that I sat on for about a year, relooking at the county policies as they related to developers and which order things were done. And we started and came out with another water quality impact assessment, which was much more comprehensive than the one that was previously used by the county in order to help in how developers and the planning and the roads, um, the work they have to do to study ahead of time in their impact on water quality. The uh, district does a, a great job on looking at conservation landscaping, tree planting, rain gardens, um, all in looking at homeowners, and I've helped in, in participating in a large number of those, in how um, we can stop the impervious surfaces. Thank you, Mr. Kerner, Mr. McGovern. Okay, I uh, appreciate it. Um, again, this is going to come back to the workforce. Uh, uh, as part of the oversight, we want to make sure that the workforce is staying current because part of, certainly a responsibility for the Soil and Water Conservation District is to provide expertise and advice. And we want to make sure that the, the folks coming in are able to do that. The impervious services are certainly something uh, that's been coming on board over the last several years. And I think people coming out of uh, the college environment or, you know, or fairly early in their careers are going to be more likely to be on top of that. So we want to be, be aware of that. I think we've all noticed there's a few strip malls in uh, Fairfax County. And uh, that is, I, I agree, that's having an impact. So we want to, you know, provide... Let me mention that Fairfax County is now an urban, considered an urban soil and water conservation district, which is uh, unusual, but that's recent. But that is definitely something, uh, you know, for an urban district to be focused on and, lo and looking at. And again, we want to look to our permanent staff to be, to be ex for their expertise there. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Mr. Bowen. Thank you very much. I met with constituents down in Willow Creek, and they said that about 20 years prior, there had been a large homeowner development, and they had told everyone who they could find that, no, this is going to cause problems. They were not listened to. As a result, the development caused the bed of Willow Creek to change from being sand, which was permeable, to being rock, which was not. They have had a numerous and more and more flash flooding incidents. What can we do? We can listen. Listen to the people in the area. Make more and more efforts, which the Soil and Water Board already does admirably, but increase those efforts to listen to the people who live in the areas, because they're the ones who know what can happen. Additionally, we can always suggest remediation. Again, the Board does not legislate, regulate, or adjudicate, but we can certainly suggest that people put in areas within even parking lots where there are trees and which can even have permeable surfaces so the effects of rainwater are lessened when they come down in, um, in storms. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Ms. Dudick. Thank you. Uh, the question of impervious surfaces, one thing that the, uh, the board can do is to push for a balanced growth plan. Um, you can we need to do a better job of conserving green spaces and uh, repairing, uh, repairing areas uh, near our streams, and that will help with stormwater runoff. And also, um, I've been asked a couple of times about growth, and I've brought up uh, impervious um, surfaces and you know what can be done to uh, help prevent stormwater runoff. And a lot of people haven't heard of any kind of impervious surfaces in parking lots or in your driveway. And so I think one thing that the board can do is just get out there and, and educate. Because a lot of us just put down concrete in our driveways or in our strip malls because that's what we've, we've always done. You have to shift the mindset. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudick. Ms. Bilger. 
Thank you very much. Um, so as was mentioned before, the board unfortunately can't stop a housing development no matter how much the um, community is advocating for that. But in the same sense, we have opportunities to work again with community partners. We have a very small staff and there is um, a dedicated staff doing a lot of work. So they have amazing programs that can deal with impervious surfaces, including um, a, a a grant program that helps stewards in their home and make differences where they can change their um, driveways, for example. And also there's a seedling sale annually where they can provide opportunities for individuals to purchase uh, trees for more planting in areas and not just trees but also native plants and other things. There is a wealth of opportunity within the Soil and Water District Board. Um, what we need to do is kind of work a little harder on the partnerships and engage our partners to be better advocates on our behalf so that we can really attain some of our goals. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Bilger. Mr. Thomas. Well um, my first okay my first thought here is point out once again that we do not actually have any legislative or regulatory powers so we can't tell people not to do things I mean we can tell them but they don't have to listen and we have the the soil and water has already done some some work with with making th things like permeable parking lots and I'm, I've been disappointed that there hasn't been more of that but I don't have, haven't studied the details yet. It could be that there are problems with that. For example, um, runoff from asphalt going directly into the groundwater through our permeable systems. So I don't really know that that we can can. I mean, there, there may be reasons that it hasn't gone faster. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Peters. Thank you. Uh, it's absolutely correct that impermeable surfaces contribute to the degradation of our streams. They raise the peak flows, they increase the total amount of runoff that doesn't go into the groundwater. My pet solution is what is called either natural landscaping or conservation landscaping. We in fact have, a, the district runs a program, a state funded program, to help people convert, amongst other things, convert turf into natural vegetation. We call it, in the program we call it conservation landscaping. I'm a strong advocate for that. We can't stop all permeable pa pavements being installed. The county is urbanizing. It continues to install necessary impermeable services, rooftops, driveways, and roads. But we can take the acres and square miles of turf across Fairfax County and convert parts of it that aren't necessarily in turf into uh, a better use, which not only re it uh, sequesters carbon, and as I mentioned earlier, also reduces runoff and reduces uh, fertilizer use. Thank you, Mr. Peters. So the next question seems to be perfectly suited for Mr. McGovern, who's brought up a couple of these already. The question is, and I'm going to combine two, what is the difference between the role of a director and the role of staff? And what, what will you do as a director to help the constituents in Fairfax County understand what the board does? Yes, I have mentioned the permanent staff, and I don't want to give the impression that uh, they will do everything. I think believe the board of directors is the voice for the organization. Uh, they can move out uh, as far as those areas. We also need to understand, um, you know, the funding, f funding streams, uh, I know the vast majority of the funding f for this organization is from the county, uh, and, but there are opportunities for both federal and state funding. <clears throat> uh, we, need to, we need, you know, background coming in to let people know uh, where, to, where to look uh, for different funding streams because money, money talks, it's very important. Uh, and, and again, the board is probably what the board is better able to um, actually interact with uh, various organizations. We'll say the Boy Scouts. I've talked to that organization. I know um, uh, Soil and Water is involved with the public schools uh, to provide education programs. Um, so I see uh, the board as a voice for the organization. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. McGovern. Uh, Mr. Bowen. Thank you very much. When it comes to the difference between the staff and the directors, the directors are there to oversee it. They are there to ensure the finances are kept there and there to ensure that the proper fiduciary duties are carried out and that there is the proper coordination amongst all the higher agencies such as the Fairfax County itself, um, the Soil and Water Conservation District Boards as well as others. Within the 
uh, four-year strategic plan uh, that uh, was implemented in 2016. The primary job of the Board of Directors with goal number five, which is to ensure a strong organization, is to seek and ensure adequate funding as well as retain staff and effectively manage operations. So as the director, I will continue to make sure that we have the highest quality personnel and as I've mentioned before, make sure that we are reaching out to engage the community to help engage the places that can really um, help accelerate what the board of directors and the district can do together. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Ms. Dudick. Thank you. The board of directors really oversee and coordinate um, what goes on with the with the board and then the staff or the technical experts who go out and uh, help the Fairfax County residents and and, and other departments uh, with the natural resource management issues and I would like to go out uh, continue to go out to push to go into the public school system and s start young start with the kids uh, they're the ones who uh, will, will grow up and um, will be able to use the ser uh, services of the board and then also to increase the social our social media presence. Um, there doesn't seem to be that much of a social media presence, and uh, hopefully to increase it and um, and that way to increase volunteers. Uh, the more volunteers you get, the more people will understand the the mission of the board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudick. Ms. Bilger. Thank you. I actually have, there's been a lot covered here, so it's kind of hard to come up. Um, mm -hmm. The volunteering is a big aspect. I can tell you, Jerry Peters and I have had to bundle uh, the tree seedlings together. That takes a couple hours. Um, it's actually quite enjoyable, but you do get dirty. Mm -hmm. um, but seriously, the, the board has quite a bit. Uh, we've talked about the budget. We've talked about identifying, strengthening partnerships that we have. There is going to be a new strategic plan that's going to have to be created coming forward. Um, so there is a lot of oversight and there is a lot of discussion about new opportunities. And one of those opportunities that I would like to include is the intersection between health and the environment, um, ensuring that that's part of the, the verbiage. Um, I would also like to ensure that we're part of the One Fair Fact vision um, that just came out in 2016 I think it's very important when we're looking at strategic outreach uh, especially in some of our communities that are suffering and um, have definite inequity so thank you very much thank you Ms. Bilger Mr. Thomas okay the question was about publicizing our work and getting information to the, to the people there are five directors and essentially eight staff and they're 1.2 million Fairfax residents. We're not going to get a whole lot of face-to-face -face contact. It just doesn't work. We can't do that. What we can do is, um, well, I mean, we, we can do social media some. We can do projects that people can participate in without having to have much face-to-face -face contact. Um, we can, uh, I wanted to say something. Ah. Um, we can, we can look at getting, getting funding for things that involve more publicity as well as, as just things that, that actually do work for people. That's, that's mostly what I have to say about that. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Peters. Thank you. Um, let me say, first of all, that the, the staff is not just a staff. We have an executive director who oversees the day-to-day -day, uh, job of, of the eight to nine, depending on how many interns we have, uh, uh, staff. Um, the current uh, director, Laura Grape, and her predecessor, Diane Hoffman, have been excellent executive directors. They are not elected, they are staff, but they run the show. They keep the organization going, make sure the day-to-day -day work gets done. Directors set the policy. We, we uh, as has been mentioned, we, we review the strategic plan every four years. Every year, we re-examine the plan and see how we're doing on an annual basis. So we set policy. We oversee the operations. We are fiduciaries uh, for, for the district. Uh, so there's a, d a distinct dis difference. The conversation got distracted into, con uh, into contact between uh, staff and, and the public. I want you to know that we talk to thousands of people each year, not the directors, but the staff. And we can't get 1.2 million people every year, but we try. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Peters. Mr. Kerner. Thanks. I'd, I'd like to echo everything that Jerry said. You know, the, the staff 
is, is just a wonderful group of people. Some of them have been there 30 years. They're not county employees. They don't have the same salary levels. They don't have the same benefit levels. They're just dedicated to helping people. I like them. I've known a bunch of them for 20 years. They're fun people. They have this shared passion that this, you know, is involved in all of the discussions we have. Yes, the board's the fiduciary group. We stick with the goals. We help set up the, the goals. But you know, Jerry and I will be tomorrow at the technical advisory group looking at some of the staff initiatives and listening to them because they're really sharp people and they do a, a tremendous amount of outreach. Um, Laura Grape, the executive director, is a phenomenal networker and she gets, you know, all of the different county agencies involved in the discussions at the board meeting. You know, Jerry and I and Monica put together 13,000 tree seedlings last April and that's a major community effort. There are a whole bunch of people that look forward to getting those seedlings every spring. So you should get on the list for next year. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Peters. You're not the kind of guy that makes the turns on side. Two for three. Helping. What a nice young man. Pass it on. My goodness. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. I better get out of here. Ooh. I just threw the ball. This is really bad. What are we gonna do? We? we? Go to the door and ask for the ball back. Are you serious? It's my ball, Myrtleback. You're so dead. I'd run away. Yeah, to Uruguay. Kiss your life goodbye. Sorry. Let's go. Some friends you are. an accident, and we can fix the window. Come on, I'll come with you. Loyalty, pass it on. You go first. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know now. Here's the host. So this question for Mr. Bowen. Um, someone wants to know that the, the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District Board of Directors um, serves a mostly urbanized area, while other districts in the state are more rural. So at one point when there was a Soil and Water Conservation Board, Fairfax County was more rural, but that's changed a lot and the county is growing incredibly fast. So what are the challenges of being on the Soil and Water Board in, in this area versus boards in other areas? And, and, and how, do you, how do you embrace that challenge of an urbanized district? Thank you very much, Catherine. And it is an exciting challenge. There are still some farms within Fairfax County, including the one I live near, uh, Frying Pan Farm, but it is becoming an increasingly urbanized area. The differences between what we do versus what our more rural counterparts would do is that we face the issues that you get when you have impermeable surfaces, the effect on streams. Um, we also deal with what do you do deal with larger and larger buildings. South County has a large amount of marine clays underneath the surface, and those are subject to significant shrink-swell factors. These require deeper foundation feet. Thus, if you're building a multi-story building, these are challenges that you have to take into account down in South County that you would not have in, say, the outer parts of Fauquier County or Prince William. Thus, we need to work more with uh, 
our technical staff to make sure that we are getting the best advice as to how to deal with the increasingly urbanized environment, including how do we deal with issues that we've already discussed, such as rain runoff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Ms. Dudick. Thank you. So Fairfax County has moved very quickly from an agricultural area to uh, mainly an urban one. And uh, our main problem here is growth, you know, fast growth, and the non-point source pollution that comes from things like uh, pet waste and fertilizer and uh, oil from car dealerships and car mechanics running off into our streams during uh, stormwater events. And so one of the things that the board has to do in a more urban area versus an agricultural one is to really hit home with um, locals here in Fairfax County that they have a, a large effect on the pollution that goes into our streams. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudick. Ms. Bilger. Thank you. I'd like to mirror what Ms. Dudick said. Um, she's exactly on point, but I don't see it as um, a challenge so much as an opportunity. Stormwater pollution is the fastest growing form of pollution for the Chesapeake Bay, endangering the Chesapeake Bay, and of course that means also our local streams. Um, Northern Virginia Soil and Water staff and I worked at a hyper-local stream called Little Hunting Creek. It's known as the trashiest stream in all of Fairfax County, where they've had pulled out hundreds of shopping Parts and so forth. So you can see the impact humans have on our local streams. I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to work in an urban area to really improve outcomes for our local streams as well as the Chesapeake Bay. And ultimately, that's what the staff at Northern Virginia Soil and Water is doing. Um, and I'm proud to have worked with them in doing so and hope to continue to do that kind of outreach so that we start making an impact on our local streams and ultimately the bay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bilger. Mr. Thomas. Okay. The the urban and rural situations just really aren't comparable, and I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, what, what can we say about it except that we deal with what we've got. Um, we, have, uh, all right, we have our challenges. We also have um, more, more p volunteers to call on and more, more people with considerable expertise to call on. We, the, the, the bigger population gives us more to work with also. Excellent points, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Peters. Thank you. I would, I would have two, two responses to that. One is the change in the kinds of activities that we deal with and the kinds of pollution that results. We are an urban county. Our, our agriculture base is now very small. Uh, but the car runoff and all the urban sources that we deal with, most of the rural, rural counties don't. Another big difference is how we communicate. In the rural counties, the soil and water conservation staff, there might be only a couple of them, but they might have to deal with two, five, seven hundred uh, people. They can deal face to face with most of their major producers. We've got eight staff. We're dealing with, as Jed has mentioned before, 1.2 million people. So our communication, besides the individual calls that come into the office where we have our staff go out and respond, we have to reach 1.2 million people other ways. A website does that. I have proposed that we take all the conservation projects that we have helped install, and including the ones we funded, uh, and put them on a website so that anybody in the county can find a local conservation project and benefit by going to see it, possibly taking to the owners, and learn about what we're talking about up, up close and personal. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Mr. Kerner. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Catherine. Um, the, the Northern Virginia District is the leader in the country for urban soil and water conservation districts. Most of them are rural, as we mentioned, and they deal with going back to the Dust Bowl in the 1930s. And so they're truly more conservation in the old school way of looking for it. We've done a lot. Willie Wood has, has spent, even though there is so, still some um, rural areas of our county. He's, he's famous within the group in his 30 years of, of looking at pasture management and, and runoff and tree planting and riparian habitat control. Um, a lot of the things that we deal with with the rain gardens have a, a major impact on phosphorus control, which is a limiting nutrient going out into the bay and, and causing eutrophication. Um, We've prepared some great guidance documents from everything from homeowners to the contractors out there and trying to network them all together and set standards on how they work together, as well as the conservation um, assistance programs. Um, you know, we, it is a difficult situation. We're, we're suffering from the legacy of, of hundreds of, 
of stormwater permits, that, uh, waivers that were granted in the 90s and trying to recover from them. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. Mr. McGovern. I thanks. Um, yeah, there's no question that uh, the Fairfax County has gotten away from the roots uh, when the soil and water conservation districts were first established in the 40s. Uh, but that presents itself as an opportunity, though. Someone might say, okay, can we get a government agency to die? Now, actually, as uh, a couple of folks have brought up, um, there are challenges that, you know, we, we are in good shape to meet. Um, when I was in Japan, there was a problem with uh, POL, petroleum oil and lubricants from um, old army installations that have been built up. Okay, that is something we need to be aware of. Okay, and we, and we have, because of the type of population we have, uh, you start looking at all the different gas stations and everything, it's like, yeah, we got over a million people, it's gonna stay that way, okay? Uh, we're gonna have to have some kind of come, you know, come to God on, uh, you know, pesticides and uh, uh, fertilizers for everybody's lawn. Um, that, that is something that we can have, uh, you know, two to horn on. And I think, as I mentioned, we are an urban district and we should uh, remain strong and point the way forward. Thank you very much. So this final question, we are going to start with Ms. Dudick. Someone has asked this question. Fairfax County has taken on some ambitious overarching policy directives like One Fairfax, Health in All Policies, and Fairfax Green Initiatives. How will you work to ensure that these good intentions are comprehensively applied and implemented? Thank you. So again, the, the board is non-regulatory, but they can help to encourage the adoptions of these different uh, policies like the Green Initiatives or the One Fairfax uh, through uh, education uh, in the public schools, on social media, uh, with volunteers, and, and going out there and working with locals, the technical experts. So they do have a role to play in all of these, and mainly it centers around um, education and volunteer opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudick. Thank Ms. you. I, I also would like to mirror what Ms. Dudick said. Um, those policies are all intertwined with what our outcomes are all about, too. Um, a healthy environment is healthy people. Um, ensuring that we have adequate tree canopy in the county doesn't mean we just have adequate tree canopy in areas like... Um, green spaces and not our higher urban areas that are socioeconomically disadvantaged, which is unfortunately the case um, throughout the county. So there are a lot of opportunities for soil and water to integrate all of our outreach and ensure that we're achieving um, our outcomes based on some of the communities that we need to ensure that we're, that we're touching, that we're speaking to, and that includes our partnerships with the schools, ensuring that we're integra integrating our conversations with those community members. Um, we're super excited. There's a lot of opportunity for soil and water. Uh, again, the staff is doing the best they possibly can do, but with our partnerships, we can continue developing and growing the education and importance. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Bilger. Mr. Thomas. Okay, well, as people say, we are only a, a little piece of this, but a vital piece. The, um, when when the, the soil and water is, um, it covers the county, but it's not owned by the county, so that gives us a special relationship, um, unintuitive um, interactions. Sometimes we can be useful in ways that that you wouldn't expect because we don't have to follow the same rules exactly. We, we've got the, the interactions with the other, um, with, with many other organizations and ser service as information conduits and so on. Um, we do lots of things that are, are not, not obvious and not easy to define that can, that can be a big help. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Peters. Thank you. Um, the question is, is uh, should we as directors of the Soil and Water Conservation District be paying attention to public goods beyond the environment? Uh, and I would say yes. I'd say that we are still spending public funds. They come from different sources. We get state, federal, and local funding. Uh, I think it's incumbent upon us to reflect the, the social values of the communities in which we operate. And to that extent, one Fairfax, uh, looking at, at, at climate change, these other things that might seem peripheral to soil and water, nevertheless, are relevant for a publicly funded public body. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Mr. Kerner. Thanks, Jerry. Um, 
One of the important things about One Fairfax is to ensure that the environment is, is one of the major considerations in that implementation. Um, I have a personal relationship with many of the Board of Supervisor members and the school board and various leaders within the county staff, both in land development services um, and public works. I think that reputation is enhanced by the Soil and Water Board and, and the, the reputation there of, of a technical, unbiased expertise that really can be called upon by the county to help solve some of the, the issues that the county themselves can't solve very well. And, you know, we've been involved with that um, th throughout the years, and it, it's really kind of fun again to, to work and re really be able to, to solve a problem that, that uh, the county itself can't handle very well. I think those reputations and also in, in the legislative priorities that we can and advance throughout the community um, help in, in our stewardship of the environment. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. Mr. McGovern? Thanks. Okay. Um, as far as being involved with other programs, I think we want to remain firm that we're a conservation organization, and when we deal other programs, we want to bring in conservation ideas. Conservation has been around for a while. It's a critical, uh, it's a critical, you know, critical thing. Uh, we want to stay with it. I know that the, uh, the Soil and Water Conservation District does have uh, legislative integration, uh, which, which, which is quite important. But uh, these are things that we want to look at uh, outside as far as developing the strategic plan, which sounds like programming to me, uh, the annual plans uh, that we work in. And um, again, we want to generate good ideas and make sure that people do not forget about conservation. It's very applicable in our urban district and we want to remain, remain so. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Mr. Bowen. Thank you, Catherine. As I said before, I'll say again, a jack of all trades is a master of none. The Soil and Water District has six full-time employees, two part-time employees. We need to keep the focus on the major task ahead of the Soil and Water Board and the district. These include updating the annual soil survey, which is vital when homeowners, developers, and other people in Fairfax are making their building decisions. We need to update next year the new four-year strategic plan, and we need to continually update the annual statements of work. These are the things upon which we should work. When we talk about such um, abstract nouns as one Fairfax or equity, I would point out the fact that in the strategic plan uh, for 2016 to 2020, they had something saying bring together diverse agencies, businesses, organizations, and individuals to implement conservation projects, a matrix, where they would say whether something's planning, implementing, developing, or being evaluated. This matrix is blank. They did not even plan to have a plan to bring together diverse agencies, businesses, organizations, or individuals to implement conservation projects. As a soil and water director, I will make sure that when we make a plan, we will ensure that we follow through. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowen. So we have now come to the part of our program where everyone is going to take their 30-second wrap-up. We are going to start with you, Ms. Bilger, in your closing statement. I just want to thank again everyone who's watching. My name is Monica Bilger. I am running for Soil and Water. My Democratic colleagues, endorsed colleagues here, Jerry Peters and Chris Kerner, have inspired and awed me, as have the staff at Soil and Water. It would be my honor, and nothing short of that, to be in this volunteer position, to continue their incredible mission, the work that they've been doing, and to continue further engaging on all the partnerships that we've just mentioned, including One Fairfax, including the health uh, um, piece and all of those components. I think it is important just as um, Jerry Peters had said uh, to ensure that we're integrating those into our our future. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Bilger. Mr. Thomas. Okay. I'm Jonah Thomas and I hope to to work closely carefully with this organization. Um, it is a an organization that does not does, that has secrets it's hard to, hard to be sure exactly what is going on, and so my intention is to, to cooperate very, very carefully and try not to rock the boat too much when, before I'm completely sure what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Peters. Thank you. Um, I'd like to point out, finally, if I didn't do, do it before, is that I'm a member of a team. I'm currently a member of the team of the Soil and Water Conservation District. I'm running as a team with Monica and with Chris as, as uh, uh, independents endorsed by the Democratic Party. We have an environmental engineer, an environmental scientist, and an environmental advocate. 
uh, as, as part of this team and compliments the work of the, of the district very nicely. I hope to get your vote. I hope you vote for my team members. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Mr. Carter. Thanks, Jerry. And thanks to the League of Women Voters for holding this um, uh, forum. I'm Chris Kerner. I'd like to continue to use the expertise I've gained over 40 years of, of passionate environmental stewardship to help contribute to the health and the environmental health of, of Fairfax County. As Jerry said, this is a team, and it's a great group of people, and I enjoy working with it. And as I've retired, I like to work with good people that are really helped to contribute. Um, I think you've heard well from Monica and Jerry and myself that you know, we're very involved in the community and would like to keep going. Thanks. I'm Chris Kerner. Thank you, Mr. Kerner. Mr. McGovern. Yes, Ed McGovern. And I believe that my resource management background with uh, the federal government uh, it will be very helpful with the board of directors uh, in focusing on, you know, I've already discussed FTE positions with uh, an excellent uh, ex executive director, uh, Laura Gray. Uh, and I'll mention that I'm with the team also. Um, it's uh, Chris Bowen, Jane Dudick, Ed McGovern. We've heard a lot of quality tonight, but I'm very impressed, interesting enough with the folks to the left of me, uh, Chris Bowen and Jane with their depth and knowledge and, uh, and energy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Mr. Bowen. Again, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this event. As we look to the November 5th election, consider what experience you want on a board of directors. May I recommend a PhD in environmental science, a man with a master's who has dealt with the most complex agency, the Department of Defense, in remediating their toughest environmental projects. What do I bring? I'm a lawyer who has helped advise boards of directors and has dealt with soil and water issues consistently. This team will bring the experience you need to ensure that your needs are met by your Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District Board of Directors. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Ms. Dudick. Thank you again, uh, Jane Dudick. And I have the, I believe I have the necessary academic experience, work experience. And then I also have a love for the environment and an interest in it. And please consider voting for me and my teammates, uh, Chris Bowen and Ed McGovern, on November 5th. And uh, please remember to get out there and vote uh, on that Tuesday. Thank you. That concludes our candidate forum. Before the candidates give, uh, we thank these candidates for participating tonight. We also want to thank our volunteers, Mary Valder and Bree Driscoll, and our screeners, Rona Ackerman and Taylor Kim. Thank you all for watching. Remember to vote on November 5th. Encourage your family members and neighbors to do the same. Please check out the websites of all of the candidates here. If you don't understand what the Soil and Water Conservation Board does, this is the perfect opportunity for you to take an interest not only in these candidates, but what you at home can do to become engaged in being the answer to the problem of what we do in Fairfax County in Northern Virginia about conserving our natural resources, supporting equitable open spaces for everyone in our county and supporting healthy practices. Go vote, you can vote early.